Hey guys, welcome to Mobile Geeks. I'm Nicole Scott and this is... Dandaman, hello friends. And we are in a very special secret location at an Audi Insights Day because we got to get a sneak peek at what's coming next with everything in Audi's lineup. And so this is kind of that moment where we go, okay, let's look at the next few years. And there was a lot for us to process because there's a lot of different platforms coming out. Well, I mean, start Let's go back maybe one one step because uh, <laughs> Audi just released last year the Audi e-tron, which mm -hmm. is uh, a kind of remodeled old platform because they use the Q5 long version of China and build in this beautiful electric car, totally um, BEV car. And now they're making the next steps. So that's why we're here. So we are here that because Audi told us about their strategy and their plans for the next, well, upcoming years, actually. Mm -hmm. And you see behind us, um, this is uh, a Q4. It's a study, but I heard- Yeah, it's, it's a concept far car. away from the original version. So this is the Q4. This is also an all electric car. But yeah, you, uh, you started about talking about the platforms that they have, and they yeah. are different platforms. There are, and it took me a while to kind of get it, because there's a lot of tech packed into all of this. So there's a few different ways that we can look at it. We can start at the very top, the fully electric car, right? Everyone gets this concept, yeah. right? You are a driver who wants to drive long distances. You have the infrastructure in your city that can handle the fast charging, and you're, you're sort of ready to make this leap. Everyone gets the electric car driver now. But then if we trickle down, we're starting to look at the plug-in, which is your favorite. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then also the mild hybrids. Right, and yeah. so there's actually a, a lot of electrification going on uh, in Audi's whole line. So there's going to be 30 electrified cars, 20 of which are going to be fully electric. Which is amazing. Uh, I mean, again, we start last year with the e-tron, uh, and one car, with one car, at like <laughs> 20 until 2025 is a lot. Yeah, but you see. I mean, what Audi is doing here is electrifying their whole line of models. Line. And you can have the mild hybrid if you want to start with like, if you're not sure about electrification, but still the mild hybrid has a very small battery, but it allows you to run quietly in your uh, doorway, not doorway, but if you- Driveway. Uh, driveway, sorry, not in, don't do that in the doorway. Um, <laughs> no, but it, it allows you to drive quietly in, in your driveway in, in a few meters. And it helps you also, it, it starts, you don't hear it starting anymore. so. It's it's like as also at, at the traffic light, it helps you. The plug-in hybrid does something else. It gives you a certain amount of range. Yeah, so you're actually able to go between 40 and 50 kilometers using this battery. So it's a beefier battery that's in the car and actually gives you an electrified range. Whereas the mild hybrid, and we have a lot of content explaining this. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, if you don't understand the 48 volt battery, you can check all these videos below that I've made <laughs> about this concept, right? But the, the 40 to 50 is you driving an electric car. Right? It's not fully electric because you still have your gas engine, everything's still there, but when you're in the city, most people only drive 50 kilometers. And if they're driving to their work, there's, there's a pretty high chance that they have a charging ability at work. If they don't, they can make it home, but if they can't, they have the gas engine. Right? So this exactly. is sort of that in the middle, sort of, okay, we're, we're committed to inner city driving, but we need a fully petrol yeah. car. Plug-ins make sense if you have like a smaller-ish car and mm -hmm. you mostly, or your like daily commute is mostly in a city and you don't commute over 50 kilometers. So Americans, sorry, you're out, but uh, for Europeans or people in Japan or other countries, uh, it's a perfect car. Oh, this is the other thing that's super interesting about this, this small battery. You can charge it with your wall socket. Yeah, of course. So you can actually, in two and a half hours, you can fill up the battery from a normal plug that you already have in your wall. And this, to me, was kind of that moment where I saw electric cords hanging out of windows or, you know, but re realistically, not everyone can put a wall charger. In, if you're yeah. renting, right, if you're living in an urban city center, you may not have a fixed parking spot. From the 20 story. Like. From the 20 story, <laughs> just hanging down a little cord. <laughs> no, but you have the possibility. I mean, you have like nowadays, I mean, come on, uh, it's, it's, 20, it's nearly 2020 now. So what you have is like a facility to charge your car in every city. 
uh, around the world. Uh, I mean, even even in Mexico City, you can do it. So that's that's not the problem. Um, so you can charge your car, um, even when you can't do it like in front of your house, there is a charging point somewhere around the corner, which makes more sense than coming to the battery electric cars. And for example, the Q4, which is behind us, the study is, is a fully electric car, which has a good range. I heard like 400 to 500 maybe. So it has a good range. So you can use it also for long, um, long distance traveling. And it has a quick charger which like powers it up like uh, in, in 20 minutes or 30 minutes from 20% to 80%. So you can use it. So this is like, you have like different cars now and you can see it here in, in the row. There are different cars and, and different scenarios that, that what kind of car you use or need for, for yourself, you can find it in the lineup of Audi. And this is, uh, to be honest, I mean, these cars are not on the market yet. That mm -hmm. did you see, but they're coming especially the plug-ins, and I think Audi is one of the first ones who, who really push it in this direction. I mean, other manufacturers have also some plug-ins, but going through the whole lineup, mm -hmm. of this and, 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 and also bringing in new platforms, they have, as I said, the, the ML, the old one, which is the Q5, uh, also then they have the MEB, which is the Q4, which is also the Golf. And um, which is like the new platform, the basic platform for all cars in the, in the Fox one. Um, and then you have the um, uh, J1. And uh, then you have the PPE. The PPE is a new one. We haven't seen it yet. Oh it's, my it's God. very secretive. I mean, it's a luxury I, think, I think we've seen it, but we can't tell no, you. No, about we can't it. tell you. We're going to get killed or like get it to a cellar somewhere in Ingolstadt after that. But you've left out one of the more exciting things about this visit, and that's the significant upgrade to the infotainment system. Yeah. A lot of the software that we've seen in the cockpit has done a really good job of explaining how the engine is using the energy and how you are consuming the energy within the car. This has been one of the things that we've yeah. talked about a lot. Yeah. We had a lot of criticism, con yeah. constructive criticism um, around the e-tron when, yeah. when that was first launched. And I think that the visual concepts that we've seen uh, from today, I think are quite solid and very easy to get. So I think that this move towards people getting the electric bug could be could you be easier to it, catch. That is, that is, it's, it's like getting closer together. It's like on one side is the electrification of the of the cars, on the other side is like the digitalization and the connectivity aspects that you have in your infotainment system. I mean, come on, when you get now in a 2018 car, it looks like a Nokia from 2004 or so. But now the steps are significant. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can see how quick they're evolving and how quick everything happens at the moment. So that is a huge step. On, on Audi side also because now the UX is way easier to use yeah. than, it, than it used to be. And the other thing we should touch on is the Volkswagen OS because we spent uh, a fair bit talking about that today and how Audi is taking part in a kind of group-wide operating yeah. system that the next foundation for the entire group is going to be the Volkswagen OS and each, each individual brand will be able to take it and skin it and then sort of access different features you know, just like off the shelf little components like trunk access for digital sales or other wonderful things that you might want into your car like dry cleaning and groceries and like all of these things that just make your car more of a hub they could choose that feature to add into their OS should they want to or they could just skin the OS and make it very Audi or Seat or you know yeah, whoever. I mean, that, uh, I mean this is a very clever thing because it's a kind of it's not Android uh, but it's a kind of Android desk way you can yeah. push out uh, or you can use the 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 system and just put a new skin on, that's it. Or you can customize it a bit in, in the terms how much you want to customize it for your customers or the region. Mm -hmm. China has other mm -hmm. uh, wishes or other demands than the US or the Europeans. So that's quite interesting. And I see that this is, uh, that, that Volkswagen and the Audi group and, and everybody who's working there in this, in this particular work group is like doing something really new and something really unique. 
and something mm -hmm. that we all waited for because if you have like one core OS, you can push upgrades and updates way easier. And now to be clear, when you compare it to Android, you're only comparing it to Android. Just, it's just, not it's, based it's not on Android. Android. It's, it's not definitely based not Android. based on Android. It's just comparable to the way it works. How it's Android like, is fundamentally yeah. an open source exactly. platform that's free and it's very core, that kind of like idealistic moment that didn't really play out for a lot of phone makers out there. <laughs> so we learned a lot today. We did learn a lot today. That was very interesting. And we got to drive around a little bit. We which was, around. Yeah, we had the Q7, was which was a huge car, but it has a very yeah. nice uh, engine and plug-in hybrid and the A7, which is the same, but it's, uh, it, it, was, it was really a nice impression that we got from, from both cars. Almost too spacious for my liking. Yes. <laughs> You're too small. It's I know. I was fine. I you was were fine. Yeah. I was like, oh, it's too big. <laughs> yeah, so thanks a lot. All right, guys. We have a lot more content because we, we actually refer to several videos yes. in, in this video. And so if you're unclear about mild hybrid, 48 volt, 12 volt, the e-tron, we have a lot of content below, so check the playlist. Thanks again for joining us. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.